Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sewing the Tempo Athletic Tights. It is a sewing pattern from Green Style Creation and I'm so excited to get started on this one. This pattern has some great color blocking lines that are so fun um, on the legs. They're great for using up scraps or if you just wanna have some um, really cute details on your tights. They have a great pocket um, that is optional but I don't know why you would include the pocket. It's pretty easy and fun to do. And um, as well, it comes in a petite standard and tall file. So pick the, the file that goes with your inseam. The petite file is based off of 26 inch inseam and that's measured to your ankle. So when I buy pants, I buy a 27 inch inseam, but when I buy tights, I get 26 inch because I wear them um, to where they're at right at my ankle. They don't go as far down as I would wear maybe jeans. So, um, so just be mindful of that. And um, the 29 inch is the regular or standard file. And then the tall file would be for 32 inches um, for your inseam. So once you've picked your file and then you print, I'm gonna go over all the pattern pieces. Let's, let's go ahead and head over and I can start showing you the pattern pieces. Okay, so let's talk about the pattern pieces. Um, the first one I wanna show you is the waistband. So on the waistband, you have lots of different options. Um, first, you have the shape of the bottom. So if you want the heart shaped, then you're going to cut along here. So let me show you without it cut so you can see. So you are following this higher line right here and then scooping down if you're doing the heart shape. If you are doing the non-heart shape, then you are following this lower line right here and then letting it scoop like this. I'll go ahead and just outline it so you can see. That would be the line if you are not gonna do the heart weight, the heart butt. Um, another thing to choose on your waistband is whether you're doing the high rise or the ultra high rise. So on these leggings, I do the ultra high on all of mine and that hits about right at my belly button. Um, it is not as high as you would have the waistband on the strides um, or on the cavallos. This one hits, the highest point of it hits lower than the highest point on the waistband on those. So I would um, I would say to start with the ultra high on this because you can always take some off when you try them on, but you can't add once you have taken off. Um, the high rise hits about, a, I would say, an inch and a half below my belly button. Okay, that is on the waistband. So now let me show you on the back piece. So you'll also need to cut the tempo tights back you'll cut two of these as mirror images and then you have an option right here based on which waistband you cut so you're going to want to cut the one that scoops down so it's going to go up and then scoop down if you're doing the heart booty if you're not doing the heart booty then you're going to cut this shallower line right here and then go up another thing on the back is you have an optional gusset so i always just cut the regular one and then I fold back whenever I'm going to cut off the gusset so that I always have that option um because if I cut this off then I have to completely repent reprint this entire piece um without it so that is important um now you're also going to need two of the front pieces now on the front you're going to cut whether you're doing ultra high or high you don't change the back is the, the same on all waistbands it's just the front that is different you're gonna cut two pockets. Now, mind you, if you have directional fabric, you're gonna wanna cut with that fabric facing like this. It shows you on here. Um, you're also going to want to, on your pocket, say if you're doing the ultra high or the high rise on your waistband. Um, you'll also have the front of the waistband and you're on that, you're choosing between ultra high and high. Those are the only two options that. Make sure you chose the same option you chose on the back. You have your lower insert. This is the one that goes on your calf. Mind you, the the grain line is like this, so you're not gonna wanna point it this with this point straight up. You're going to want to put your ruler down and point your the, the grains of your fabric going along with the grain line of the pattern. And here is your gusset piece. If you're doing the gusset, you're gonna wanna cut two. And then the finale is the main leg, the leg that goes all along from the top to the bottom of your leg. This is the one that you're gonna need the yardage for. Um, on this one, you can shorten or lengthen it right here. So you would just draw a line parallel and either add or subtract. The only time I think you would ever really need to shorten the tempos is um, if you have a lot of bunching of fabric around your knees, then that's because 
the the knee part is off on your pattern. So then you would need to shorten right here. Um, if you are grading, like your calves are a different size than your hips or your thighs, um, I grade it like this. You can see how I graded from a D to an E. So I just drew a line. I used my ruler so that it was straight and I just started at the top of this. And then by here, I was at the size calf that I needed. And I actually went up two sizes. Um, so I went, over the knee, I went from, a, I think, I guess it was a D to an E, um, and then I went from an E to an F over my calf. So you can kind of see that. So I went like halfway here, but then I went the full way here, because this is where I really need it is along here for my calf. Um, an important part is where to cut on these. You have all these, and if you've graded a lot of sizes, I would recommend on this particular pattern page to only print the size you need for your hips. Um, because otherwise you're going to have lots of crazy lines right here. So use those layer functions so you only have four to choose from as opposed to like 16. Um, so you're going to cut at the very top if you're just doing no pocket. If you're doing no pocket with the high rise as opposed to the ultra high, then you're going to cut right here because you're, the the difference in the rises is only really in the front um, me in, on the waistband. So it's right here. It's going to scoop lower on the pattern piece. Um, if you are doing a pocket, then you're going to choose for between ultra high or cutting right here for high. So they, I really, I thought there was like an error in the pattern whenever I brought this out because at first it doesn't make sense, but trust the pattern on where to cut. Another thing you're gonna wanna make sure is that you make these markings on your fabric and then you make the marking for the front and you make the marking for the back. Cause if you get these two switched, then your back rise is gonna be super low and your front rise is going to be super high and you're going to be like, what is wrong with my tights? Okay. Okay. So on grading your pattern, um, let's say that you have hips that are in a different size than your waistband. Well, I wouldn't grade any on the top of your hip. I would just cut out the waistband that corresponds with your waist size and then the hip that corresponds with your hip. Well, if you have a thigh that is bigger, then I would grade up for thighs because if your thighs are too tight, it can make, it can pull your pants down because um, the compression there. So let's say I printed out three sizes. I printed out D, E, and F. And let's say you needed to grade from a D and you needed to grade up two sizes to an F. So this would be, your hips are a D. So this is the line you'd be cutting out for your hip. So now that we're at this crotch point, we're getting to a bigger size for our thigh. So that means on this side, you're slowly going to come from here to here. So I'm gonna just slowly draw and see how I'm not a very good, I'm not very good at drawing, but I'm just trying to get a smooth curve and then I'll eat and then I'll kind of ease that. So you see how I went from the smaller size to two sizes bigger here. And then on here, I'm gonna start at the crotch point and I'm gonna go up two sizes as well. So this is a D hip with an F thigh. And then I, on whenever you're grading on your main legs piece, how I showed you how you can go into calves. So you wanna start on your main legs piece where, let me grab it. Okay, so in on your main leg piece, I showed you where to, whenever you're grading for calves, you're gonna start right here and then kind of go over the knee. And then on the calf, you're grading here and you're gonna print the calf insert that goes along with your calf measurement. So you don't have to grade on the, bat the bottom leg insert. You just print the size that goes whatever your calf is. Okay, um, you don't need to grade any of this really for your thighs. I would leave this part alone. You can, um, but if you, if you wanna grade here as well, like meaning grading on the front and the back pieces wasn't enough, then you would just wanna draw your line to go to that size. And you'd have to do it on the pocket as well. So I showed you how to do this on the front piece. You're gonna wanna mirror the exact same thing on the back piece. You're going to wanna start and then grade out for the larger size on this size, and then grade out for the larger size on this one. Now, if your thighs are maybe just one size smaller, I would not grade more than, I wouldn't grade that because, because of the negative ease, you're just gonna have a little bit more room in your thighs. Um, if maybe they were two or three sizes smaller, you're not anywhere near that range, then you would do the exact opposite to grade down for your thighs. If you had a, a thigh that was much thinner than your hip measurement. Um, 
Okay, so that's everything on grading. If you have any questions for a specific size that you need to grade for, please let me know. Um, anyways, let's get started. Let's get into our pattern pieces. Whatever fabric you use, here's just a fabric, random fabric sample. You wanna make sure that you can stretch a four inch piece of your fabric from four inches to at least seven inches. Now, if you get to seven inches and that fabric is like really resisting you and it is firm, those are gonna be some tight fitting leggings. Now, if you get to, if you can go from four to here, I'm gonna grab a scrap of, this is the Styled Magnolia AVP, the Athletic Brush Poly. Now, this one, now if you can get to like 100 or 125, but then they look like this, you're gonna wanna make sure you've made the right size. Cause if you make a too small a size, then your fabric is gonna look like that the entire time you're wearing it. Um, but if you take from four inches to that, see it doesn't, from four to seven, you're not having all that white out. So that's another thing to think about is when you're at seven inches, what your fabric looks like. Now to make these comforter, comforting, I can go really far past that. So I know these are gonna be really comfortable to wear. Um, they're gonna have a lot of wiggle room. Okay, so another thing before we get started sewing the tights is I wanna talk about sewing with stretch, fat, with stretch fabric um, on your serger, on your sewing machine, whatever you're using. Um, it's very important that you can get your seam to stretch as much as you can get your fabric to stretch. So if you just use a regular straight stitch on your leggings, when you go to squat at the gym, there is a very big possibility that those seams are gonna pop. Um, so one, one way to measure this is, if, is to try on scraps and to tug and to really abuse those seams. And if you can get them to pop in your hands, you're probably gonna get them to be able to pop when you're wearing them. So I shot a video about this that I used in the North Shore so along a few summers ago. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that here because I really think that it's useful for you to watch me on how I adjust my serger settings and how I get a seam that really works well on leggings. Um, if, the, if you're newer to sewing, you're newer to using your, um, your serger, this may be very helpful for you. If you don't have a serger, um, you can do the same thing on your sewing machine. Just look at your manual and find, look at your stretch stitches. One that I know is very popular is triple straight stitch, as well as a lightning bolt stitch. Um, you can use a standard zigzag, but you're really gonna have to play on scraps to see what you can get that um, will stretch well. Another downside if your seam doesn't stretch well is it will feel, your leggings will feel tighter where your seams are and they'll make more like indentions in your leg. They'll feel compressed there. So you don't really want that. You want comfortable leggings. So anyways, without much more talking, I'm gonna go into the video that I shot from the North Shore. I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. Um, and then after that, we're gonna get into sewing the leggings. Um, so if you wanna skip to just the sewing part, I'll also have a guide in the comments of this video so that you can skip to where you need help the most. This is the part of the video where we are going to talk about serger tension. Um, I've gotten messages several times over the past few years of people just asking me or telling me, I do not sew my own leggings because I have popped stitches. And um, I tell them, um, yeah, I've had that same problem too. When I first started sewing leggings, I will never forget my seams coming un unraveled. And there's two culprits. One is if for some reason my needles aren't threaded correctly. Um, if I missed one step in the process, then um, it's not right. Or if my needle tension is a little too high, um, that can pop um, one of your threads. But I'm also just going to show you how sewing on just without stretch thread in your loopers, how it really affects it. So if your fabric can stretch, this is just a, um, a very stable French terry. So it doesn't have a ton of stretch. So I am going to just do a regular, I have, I have a regular thread in my machine. And you can see um, that I have really nice, even flat seam. Um, this thread is right at the top. Everything looks wonderful. I can stretch it and always, always practice on a scrap of what you're about to make. I can stretch it and nothing pops. I mean, that is a wonderful seam and it would be a wonderful seam um, in whatever garment that I'm constructing. And it's normal that you're gonna have a little bit, if you really pull it apart this way, you're gonna be able to see the threads. That's normal and that's why you try and make sure that you match your thread to your fabric. Okay, I'm gonna do the same seam with just regular thread on, this is swim fabric and see how good and stretchy that swim fabric is. Um, 
Let me see, I just abused that one, so I'll get one I haven't abused yet. Um, I'm gonna use pink and put two layers through. Look, if you just look at it, everything looks just as good as it did on the French Terry. Um, but look at what happens. You hear that? It's breaking. I can sit there and pull my fabric. My fabric is stretching more than my seam. So what does that mean if I did a really good, nice squat in the gym? What does that mean for the seam? It means it's gonna, <laughs> it's good. I'm gonna say, I'm never sewing athletics again. And see, look what happened here. And that's, everything was the same. I mean, I couldn't even replicate this on any of my cotton microfabric or anything else, but on swim or athletic, I can definitely, and you wanna do that. So you wanna look at how you've set everything and you want to really abuse it. You wanna stretch that fabric as far as it will go and see if you can do that. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna change my thread. I'm gonna change my looper thread to be a maxi lock stretch thread and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, I have my thread switched out to where on my two needles, it's just regular maxi lock um, thread, not stretch thread the plain thread, because you're not gonna be able to put the stretch thread through um, your needle. And then on the loopers, on my two loopers, I changed that to the stretch thread. It's a it's a nylon based. Um, and then I have everything set to four. I say as your baseline, before you start adjusting anything, have it to four. And my stitch length is at two and a half. And then um, my differential is set between neutral and 1.5. So it, I would call it about 0.75. Okay, so I have, this is the fabric that I just abused and was able to rip that seam. And I'm going to sew on it with just making that change. And I'm gonna show you what the seam looks like. You're gonna notice that now my tension is not balanced. Do you see how this, this thread, they're, they're meeting closer to the front. So the next change that I'm gonna make is that I'm going to change this dial up to, I start at three and a half, but I know I usually have to go closer to three. So I don't even start abusing it until I see that everything is balanced. So now see it's balanced. And now that it's balanced, I'm also gonna do another thing is I'm going to lower my left needle just a little bit. And a little goes a long way, but if something's gonna pop, it's usually your left needle thread. And if you can lower the tension on the left needle thread, even just a little bit, it'll help. Another thing you can do is increase your stitch length. So mine is set at two and a half. So I'm gonna change the dial over here. I'm gonna put it down to two. Um, so I'm gonna change that. And then we're gonna give our seam that exact same tug. Same pretty seam. And it's all, and it's softer. You can see the nylon is a softer fabric on you. And now we're gonna stretch. And you're gonna tug it, and you're gonna see that that seam can tug just as much as your fabric can. And if, and if you can break it yourself, then if, you better believe me, if you do a power squat that you can break it then too. Nothing's broken. Look how it held up so nicely. And all I had to do was, and I adjusted this this looper just because um, I've just noticed that. That's how I get mine balanced on my machine. Yours might be different. So you're gonna sit there and play with it to make sure that your yours are balanced. And then I adjust my left needle because I just know that's usually the culprit um, that's gonna pop on mine. Um, and, you're, and you're, you're gonna keep going lower and keep checking it and keep abusing it and see at what length yours is the best. I am working on the pocket option for the tempo tights. And if you are not doing the pocket, then you'll just wanna make sure that you have cut at the appropriate line on here, and then you can skip this step. Um, and I will put on the video description um, where you can skip, where you can skip um, for that. So now for the pocket option, you will need to have cut out mirror images of the pocket piece as well as your side piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the side. On the pocket option, it's gonna tell you which edge is that you're gonna to sew to the top of the side. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to make these little markings so you know um, where it goes on the side. And I also like to mark my fold line. So I just made little marks along the side of the pocket so I knew where to fold it. 
Um, also, before we get started, you can sew some interfacing, um, a knit interfacing, one that stretches at the very edge of this pocket piece. I would just take a, a half inch strip and sew it here. Um, I would just do that if you're afraid that maybe your pocket over time would get stretched out from multiple use. If you have a fabric that is low on the recovery side, maybe only has like maybe 8% or less spandex, you might need that to keep it um, from getting stretched out. But if you have a very high firm recovery fabric, you probably won't need that. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is to figure out what our right side is, and you are going to place these right sides together. So this is one side insert, and it looks like that. With the right side up, I'm gonna put this right side up and then put the pocket down on it. So you should have two pieces that look like this and you are just matching up your notches where you've marked, there's, I don't know if you can see it, but I have notches right here and I'm matching those to the notches at the top of the pocket. And then now I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna sew this seam right here. And I'm just gonna sew this with my, with my serger um, at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, I am back from the machine and I have sewn just this small seam at the top, top where I've attached the pocket to my side piece. And this is the right side facing up right here and this is the right side of the pocket down. And all I'm going to do is flip it to the back on both so that this seam looks like this. So you're going to flip it to the back like that and then now that it's flipped to the back, you are going to fold it at the fold line to where it looks like this. I'm just gonna kinda move it around until it all matches. And you should have about an inch of this pocket piece just peeking out at the top. And that's the reason why on your different cut lines that you have on your pocket piece or on your side um, that they're an inch lower for if you're doing the pocket is because the pocket is going to extend out an inch. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to reach under, fold it, put it down. So now you're just kind of messing it or like moving it around. Another thing is if you want, you can top stitch this down before you fold it. You can like top stitch it if you don't want this seam to accidentally poke out, especially if you've used a different fabric here um, for your pocket, you might wanna do that. Um, you should use your cover stitch or any kind of a stretch stitch to top stitch. Just make sure you don't use a straight stitch because then whenever you go to put your hand in your pocket, you might pop it. Okay, so now that you have done this, your pocket is constructed. Just to keep it together, um, we're, I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and just sew a basting stitch on these sides right here, just so that whenever I do any of the, um, the next steps, I can treat it as one side panel, okay? So I'm gonna just run to the machine and do that. Basting stitch, I mean just a straight stitch. That's the longest stitch your machine has because you, I, I like to remove basting stitches. I don't like to keep them in there. They're really just um, in place of using pins or clips. So if you don't wanna do a basting stitch and remove it, you can just heavily clip along this area or pin along this area to keep the layers together. Okay, now our pocket is complete and we are ready to assemble our legs. Okay, so now that I have my side panel with the pocket in it, so you can see I top stitched my pocket and then after I top stitched it, I went back and just basted along the edges just so I can hold it as one. Um, whenever you're top stitching, you're gonna wanna make sure that that seam doesn't roll out, that it either stays at the top or rolls slightly inwards like that. Um, and then you can top stitch it with any stretch stitch. Um, I did my cover stitch to where the underside is showing out. And now you're gonna grab your front piece and it should look like this. And you'll have two mirror images that look like this. And you're going to put it right sides together on the front. So you know which one is the front by two different ways. One, you're gonna have a marking and it's just the single marking right here on the pattern piece. It looks like a little triangle. On the back there's two, so you should have two lines, two dots, um, and on the front there's one. Another way to tell if you forgot to do your markings is that on the top the front is the one that dips lower. So if you look at this, the back is going to be higher and the front will be lower. So um, you're going to grab your front pieces and figure out which one's the right side 
And then I, I like to just start by putting it up next to the piece that it goes, that it's gonna match with. And then now we're gonna turn these and put them right sides together. So I'm going to flip this over and you should have also made a marking on these and you're gonna match those points. That'll help you um, whenever you are pinning everything and sewing it to make sure at a halfway point that everything is matching up. So I'm gonna go all along this curve and I am a big proponent of clipping or pinning um, at least somewhat. <laughs> Used to I just winged it, but I realized that I do a lot less seam, seam ripping when I don't wing it. So I'm gonna start with, I'll, I'll clip at that point to match up my markings, and then I'm gonna head over to the beginning of my seam and the end of my seam and do those. You're going to wanna make sure that you have a dog ear so that your seam line is meeting. So wherever the 3 8 inch from the edge is, that's where those need to meet. So I'm gonna mark that first with a clip. I'm gonna go to the other side and do that. And on, the, on this side, you're not gonna have a dog ear because it should match up perfectly. So I'll go ahead and just put that there. And then now I am going to just kind of ease this in, put maybe a clip or two in the middle. So on this one, you can tell it's, it's gonna take more easing on the bottom because it's a curve. So I like to just kind of stretch it like this, make it match, and then put clips along it. You can do this while you're sewing, but it's just so much easier to do it before you head to the machine because then you can have it evenly um, eased in here. So you're not stretching all in one spot and then not stretching in another. Because if you stretch in the wrong spots or you stretch too much in one spot, it's gonna create puckers in that seam. But if you, you ease it in evenly, then you're gonna have a very nice seam line. So you see I put a lot more clips where I know I'm gonna have to be easing it in. And this is gonna lay really nicely once I've sewn that. And I can tell that just by looking at where I've clipped. So I'm gonna do this on the other one and then we're gonna head to the machine and you're gonna use a stretch stitch. I'll use my serger and I will sew a 3 8 inch seam right along here with these right sides together. I am back from the machine. I have sewn this seam. And now this is what it looks like from this side. You can see my basting stitches now that my seam is sewn. I'm gonna remove the basting stitches right here. I'm gonna leave them for the back, um, but I'm gonna do that on both. You know, when I baste, I like to baste um, about a half of an inch away from the seam, just so that they I, I can easily remove them, that they're not caught up in my seam line any. Um, but if you don't want to remove yours, then you want to maybe do it a quarter inch from the edge so that you can, they're not showing on the right side um, when you leave them. So after I remove my basting stitches, I'm going to take this and I'm going to top stitch it on the cover stitch machine. Um, now, if you do not have a cover stitch machine or um, a top stitching um, seam that you really want to do, you don't have to. I, the first four pairs I made, I just left as is and didn't even bother with it because I had enough pretty color blocking that I kind of wanted that to shine. But, and I also, I don't even think I owned a cover stitch machine then. But now um, that I'm doing just a whole solid pair out of one fabric, I really wanna do some reverse cover stitching on these. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that, but don't feel that it's necessary for this pattern. And even if you have one, don't feel that you have to. So if you are not gonna be top stitching these seams, just make sure whatever thread you're using is one that um, whenever your fabric is stretched, you're using the right color. Um, so you really want to try and match thread for your seam. But if you're not, then you see I used a light pink that I really don't. I know it's not going to show through since I'm top stitching. So anyways, I'm going to head over to the um, cover stitch machine and I'm going to cover stitch these. I'm at the cover stitch machine and I'm going to go ahead and just do some um, reverse cover stitching on the seams that I just sewn. Um, I always like to start off with a leader so it doesn't mess up on the first few stitches. And then you're gonna push the seam away from the pocket. And since I want the underside of the cover stitch to show on the right side, I'm gonna have my seam facing towards me. I'm just trying to keep that seam nice and flat. You wanna make sure and test this on scraps before you do, before you do it on um, your actual product, just to make sure you like the thread, that everything is balanced. 
that your seam is stretchy enough. And if you don't want the underside showing, you can definitely do it the other way and just have the lines showing on the right side. And I'm also making sure that my very far left needle hits on just the outside of the seam. I'll show you whenever I finish this where the stitching is happening. So if you like that look, you can easily do the same. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the right side. Now on the wrong side, it looks like this. So my left needle, so I was sewing this direction. My left needle is actually right on the outer edge of that seam. And my right needle is just tacking this down. And that's just so it covers up the crease. So you can see up here, I got just like a little bit off. And so you can see that crease right here. And then the rest of the way I was right on target um, by keeping that left needle on the outside of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the other side and I'll be ready to put the back on. Okay, so I'm back from top stitching on the front of the legs. And if it gets a little wavy, it's really, it's okay because it's gonna stretch over your body um, whenever you have it on. So it won't show as bad. Um, another thing you can do is just steam it. So I put a little bit of water on it and then pressed it. And it got a lot of the waviness out of my seam. So I was gonna show that to you. Um, now I'm gonna grab my back pieces. So your back pieces should have the double triangle notches um, that you should have marked on there. And you're gonna match those up. So you're gonna put right sides together. So I'm gonna see which one matches first before I do that. So I'll see, yep, that goes with that one. And then this one goes with this one. I always check this first so I don't accidentally put them on the wrong one. So I just check that this is gonna have the right curve whenever it's sewn. And then I turn it over right sides together and I match up these notches. So I match that first and then I'm gonna do the same dog ear like I did on the front on this piece. And then on the top, you won't really have a dog ear. It's gonna match evenly. Oh, actually, yeah, you have just a very slight one on the top. Cause you're mainly, whenever you're clipping it, you're making sure the seam lines match up. You're not as um, worried, I guess, is, or concerned about the edge of the fabric as you are about lining up the seam line. So this one is a very slight overhang in order to get the seam lines to match up. And then I'm just gonna put a few clips in between these by just kind of stretching this out and making the edges meet. And then I'll put a clip here. And then on this one, you're matching curves. So you're just gonna kind of ease this around is what I do, like lay them flat. I'm gonna do it from this side so I can show you better. You see how it's kind of edging over, so I'll just kind of pull this and put some clips on here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then take this to the serger and we're gonna sew them right sides together. Okay, so now I am sewing the seam at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm just making sure I'm not stretching anything while I'm sewing. Um, if you do, it definitely will make your seam strip um, like nice and wavy and stuff. And you don't really want that. You just want to make sure everything is going into the machine nice and flat. Now you are going to be easing it around these curves. But if you've clipped it really well, then that easing should not be that bad. So you can see like I'm coming along an area where it's kind of... Um, wavy right here and so I'm just going to stretch just enough so that it goes in flat. So that's what my seam should look like. So you see how it's nice and flat once it was in the machine because I didn't really stretch it. I just kind of let the fabric ease around the curve. Now I'm going to do the other side and when I'm done with the other side then we're going to head to the cover stitch and I'm going to top stitch. Okay, I am at the cover stitch machine and I am ready to top stitch this seam down. I always start with a leader, like I said, just in case if it messes up, it messes up on that and I'm not having to rip stitches out of 
my main fabric. And I'm gonna press this seam away from the pocket. Um, the reason I do that is just because I really don't want stitching in my pocket. It kind of reduces the amount of pocket space that you have. Um, so you kind of want it to go to the body. And on this one, I'm making sure my outer needle is just outside that seam so it can cover the crease. Okay, so we have our um, sides done and our front and back added to the sides and you should have two mirror imaged pieces. And now we just have the calf inserts right here to do. So I've cut out two sets of mirrored image on these, the lower insert. And you just wanna pay attention to the grain line to cut them according to the grain line. And now I'm gonna separate these and we're gonna put these right sides together. So in order to see which one goes, you're just gonna follow the curves. And on this set, so I like to lay them to where both the right sides are facing up on one set. Let's see, oh, it's turned around. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. So I'm just going to flip this around like this and um, I'm just gonna pin it onto here right sides together. So I like to pin this side and then, or I'll say pin, but I'm using clips. And then I'll clip this side. And then now I'm going to just ease it in with my fingers before I get to the machine. So it's actually easier to flip it over this way because then you can see the part that's hanging over and then you can kind of ease it into it like this. And you definitely want to do this before heading to the machine because if you try and just guess how much you need to stretch or ease, you're gonna guess right, maybe 20% of the time. Depending on how long you've been sewing, you might guess right 70% of the time, but that means you're using your seam ripper when you don't guess right. And usually after you've sewn a pattern several times, you have a feel for what it's like to ease an area. Um, but if you haven't, you're not really gonna know how to get the curves exact. So I would recommend putting at least a few clips along the way um, I put just a few, but if, if you're newer, you might want to even do twice that. So I have one side clipped, right sides together. Now I'm going to do the other side of this leg. So I'm going to put this right sides together like this. And you're doing the same way that we did on the um, other inserts where you're going to have the dog ear at the top right here, where it's going to have the little triangle that hangs over. Um, at the bottom, you shouldn't have anything that's hanging over. So this is everything on this leg. And then after we do this leg, then we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other leg. And if it's easier, you can just do these one at a time. Um, you could clip all four and then head over. It's just whatever you feel the most comfortable with and what order you wanna do them. As soon as I sew a seam, um, I will go ahead and cover stitch that, that seam as soon as I finish. this is what it looks like right now with this clipped with these both of them clipped I'm gonna do my other leg I'm gonna go ahead and just clip both and then I'm gonna head over to the machine I'm gonna go ahead and start on the bottom of the leg so I have it like this and I'm gonna start sewing on this because the first um, few inches you're not really stretching it's a one for one you're I mean I shouldn't say stretching you're not easing it in um, the first part matches and it's a straight line and then it's when you start to hit the curve that you have to ease the curve to match itself. So do you see how whenever I let the clip go, so you see, see how when I let the clip go, it kind of, I'm going to have to move this until it meets the bottom. And this depends on which side you're in, which part you're going to need to ease the most. I just want to hold it flat and not stretch it. If you stretch it, it'll be wavy. Now I'm just gonna make sure that I have the little dog ear at the end. Now I'll do the other side. This is what this one looks like. This is what my seam should look like. It might be too close for you to see the full picture, but I'll show you whenever I'm finished. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do the other side. Okay, now it's time to cover stitch this um, seam. And when I cover stitch it, I am going to be pushing um, these seams to the inside. Because they naturally, I mean, you can push them whichever way that you want. But I noticed that they naturally want to lay this way towards the inside because of this round curve right here. So I'm going to push them both that way and then top stitch that seam down. Okay, if you are doing the gusset, then you are going to find one of your back pieces and you're going to make sure that you cut on the gusset line. So you're gonna have that option of cut lines. If you don't wanna do it, then just cut on um, the regular cut line. Um, and then you'll cut, if you are doing it, you're gonna cut two triangles out and I like to put them wrong sides together. So the right sides is showing on both. And then I'm gonna lay them down, right sides facing, onto my back like this. And you're gonna have a little dog ear triangle hanging out. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this and then I'll show you. And I'm going to sew just right here. This is what the hanging off part looks like. And I'm gonna sew this, I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I lined this up at the seam line and then I'm just gonna quickly sew that. And then after I do, I'll fold it over and then top stitch that seam down. And when I top stitch the seam, um, actually, whenever you top stitch it, you're gonna top stitch it towards the gusset. So push the seam allowance towards that gusset and then just do a quick top stitch right there. And then when you sew your crotch seam, you can top stitch the other side of it then. Okay, so now we are going to put our two leg pieces together. So you should have two pieces that are mirror images of each other that look like this. And you are gonna put them right sides on top of each other. And I'm going to line up the crotch seam. So this is your front seam, your front crotch seam. And you're just gonna line up that seam line. And we're going to sew this one with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do the same on my back. So if you did the gusset or you didn't do the gusset, um, it, it's the same motion. So you're just lining up the seam line. If you did the gusset, you're going to have just a small um, triangle part that hangs out. You just want to make sure you're lining up your seam line, not necessarily the edge. Okay, and I'm going to take this over to the serger. I'm going to sew this seam and then I'm gonna sew this seam, and then I'm gonna top stitch both of them down right after I sew them. Um, you notice every single time that I sew a seam and then I top stitch it right then. I don't wait until another seam is sewn. It's just so much easier to sew, to top stitch as you sew rather than to wait until the end and top stitch. Okay, so I have sewn both my back seam and my front crotch seam, and I've top stitched this. Whenever I top stitch my back seam, I pushed the seam away from the gusset. So the first gusset seam, I had pushed it this way and then this one, so it looks like this at the bottom. So this big seam right here, the main one that runs, was pushed away from the gusset whenever I sewed it. And that's what it looks like on that side. And now all we have left on the legs is to sew up our inseam. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn them inside out to where the right sides are facing each other. And um, in my normal fashion, I'm going to use a lot of clips. And that means I'm gonna clip, we're gonna do our, in, our entire inseam. So we're gonna start at one ankle and then we're gonna end at the other ankle. So before I get started, I'll just, I, I like to just line everything up so I don't get off. Um, so I'll start here and then I'm gonna clip all the way here and clip down. Start with clipping your main points. So your, your seam in, right here in the middle, the middle seam is going to meet right in the middle of that gusset. And then I'm also going to clip where my different like seams meet because you don't want to be off on those. 
So I'll meet there and this will meet here, especially if you've used any kind of color blocking, you don't want your color blocking to be off. So you wanna make sure and do those that way. If you didn't do any top stitching and you're just doing these um, regular, I would nest my seams, meaning I would have one seam going one direction and then one seam going the other. I normally would point whichever seam is on top of my fabric as it's leading in on the serger is the seam I would have put pressing towards the serger and then the one on bottom pressing away. And that way it'll the seam line will line up exactly. But if you are wanting to line up cover stitching, they're gonna be going the exact same direction. And in that case, you're either going to, one thing I do is actually kind of offset it just a little bit to where the top one is a little bit ahead of it. So once it gets under my presser fit and my presser fit presses a little bit, it'll press it in line. Another thing that you can do is going to your regular machine and just doing a basting stitch over them to keep them together if you really are concerned about getting everything lined up, kind of like lining up stripes. Um, if it's gonna bother you, then you're gonna wanna make sure um, to get that area right. But if you know it's not gonna bother you, then um, you can go quickly and be Speedy Gonzalez and go through it. So anyway, so let's head to the machine and I'm gonna sew this all at a three eighths inch seam allowance. Before I top stitch though, I'm gonna try them on just in case I, have any changes I need to make for this particular fabric um, if I need to make some adjustments in the crotch um, so definitely make sure that you don't just keep top stitching everything now that we're at a point we can put these on they're definitely not going to fit to perfection without the waistband on because the waistband's really going to pull them up where they are going to be um, sometimes I'll even finish my waistband and then kind of just clip it a little bit and put it on um, but definitely don't attach the waistband and don't top stitch this until you've had a quick um, fit check. And then keep in mind um, that some things are going to change. Um, you Another thing you can do is to sew this, put on the waistband, then try them on, and then top stitch if you know that everything worked out the way it, it should have. Sometimes um, if you have maybe smaller knees, you might need to take in more before you um, top stitch, or if you're crotch, you need to make a crotch adjustment. Um, those are just things that you might need to do, but I would encourage you not to necessarily make adjustments until your waistband is on. Um, even though I get anxious and I still try them on right away after the legs are done, I still don't change anything until I have my waistband on. Okay, so let's go, let's go sew the seam real quick and then we'll head into the waistband. We are at the step on our leggings where the legs should be completely done, all except for top stitching your inseam. And you can skip top stitching your inseam if, because that is a more tedious one. Um, but if you want to, I save that until right before I hem. So we're gonna set these to the side and you're gonna grab your waistband pieces. So whichever option you've chosen on the waistband, you should have two fronts and then you should have two backs. And now we are going to take one of our fronts and we're gonna take one of our backs and we're gonna put them right sides together. So I'm gonna line this side up and then I'm gonna line this side and then line this seam. So you're just paying attention to the seam lines. The back is obviously is a lot um, longer than the front because it wraps around so that your seam lines match up um, to where the front of the pocket is. So this is what it looks like right here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. And then one will be the lining and then one will end up being called the main fabric. So um, if you, you can use a different fabric to line if you want to, there's a possibility that it kind of shows at the top. Um, if you don't want that to happen, you're gonna have to cut a quarter of an inch off of um, both these so that it rolls to the inside. Um, but if you don't wanna mess with that, then you can just use the same fabric. Uh, make sure that whatever fabric you are using for the waistband has nice recovery, uh, because if it stretches out as the day goes on, then you will your pants will also start slipping. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to the serger. You can do this at your regular machine as well, using a stretch stitch, and I'm gonna sew these seam lines that I have just clipped. So on the side of my waistband. Um, and then after that, we can put them together. Okay, now you should have two waistband pieces. One will be the main 
and the other one the liner. If you want any top stitching to show on the outside of your pants, pick um, whichever one you want to be your main, the one that shows on the front when you're finished, and then the, pick the one that you want to be inside of your pants and the lining. Um, and then I am only gonna top stitch on the one that I want um, to be on the main. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the machine and top stitch this one, the seams. I'm just gonna top stitch these two seams down, um, and then I will be ready to put these together. Okay, so I have my two waistband pieces. I have top stitched on this one. Definitely optional, but I just wanted to continue the look that I did on my pants. And I pushed my seams away from the center whenever I top stitched them, just so that I can reduce some of the bulk um, whenever I attach my waistband to the pants. Okay, so now I have this one turned right side out. This one is turned wrong side out, and I'm going to slip this one inside. I'm gonna match up my seam lines. So now we are going to sew this seam around the top. So we'll sew it in the round. We wanna completely sew this top seam. And a lot of people like to put um, elastic in this one, a quarter inch elastic, and it makes your tights stay up um, really tight against your stomach so that um, they do not fall down at all. And that is the secret to not having slipping tights. Um, other people like me, I can't, I have like issues with that. I can't stand elastic pressing on my stomach. So I always leave it out. Um, but if my tights fit me correctly and are not too tight in the calves or too tight in my thighs, then generally they don't, I have, I guess the body shape where they're not going to just slide down. So I omit the elastic. So I feel like, um, I should disclose that to you. The fact that I, um, skip that part. But if you want to do it, there's two ways that you can do it. You can do it at the same time that you are sewing your band in. So like as we're at the serger, you can just have it be putting it in the seam and that it's just all one stitch. Um, if that feels too fiddly for you, another way to do it is just to sew the seam like regular and then go back with your regular sewing machine and just zigzag the elastic in. Um, so there are those two ways that you can do it. Whenever you sew the elastic in, you do not want to stretch it. You want it to just to be one for one um, flat on here. If you stretch it, it's going to make the opening even smaller and even tighter. So you won't be comfortable if you stretch it. Okay, so I'm going to take this to the serger and I'm going to just sew this top seam. So now I have my waistband. Um, this seam has been completely sewn and I'm going to turn it to where it is the right side's facing out and that seam is enclosed. And I did the hard option on this, which is the V on the back, the heart point on the back. And if you are not doing this option, then this part is gonna be super easy for you. You are just going to attach this right sides together to your main tights and sew it on. But if you chose to do it this way, then we are going to baste. So the first step is that we're gonna take these two layers right here and we're gonna sew these together. So we're gonna sew right here with our regular sewing machine with just a long straight stitch. And I'm gonna start maybe one to two inches right here, sew this way, and then sew that. This is just to keep them together. Otherwise, they are gonna move and this is going to make it um, more difficult than it should be. So also make sure that you've made a dot where your dot should be. So when I baste these, I'm gonna baste them a quarter inch away from the edge. I'm on the sewing machine. I'm putting it on the longest stitch on the machine, which mine goes up to 4.5. Some machines will do up to five. I'm just gonna pivot right here. And I didn't change my thread just so that you can see it. It's a contrasting color right here. And this is what this looks like basted. Okay, so I have my the top of my tights and then I have my waistband and I'm just going to see how it goes. See, it's gonna look like this when it's finished. So then I'm gonna just flip this to where the right side fits over the top like this. And hopefully if you have, you've marked your center points, you can match them up. If you haven't, you can kind of see where the center is and match that with the center on your tights. I'm just going to match it by the seams and I'm going to put a pin, a clip here and then I'm going to do the same and put a clip here. You want clips at least every 
seven or eight inches just to keep you on track. I'm gonna start at the back of this V and I'm gonna take my V and I'm gonna line it up on my waistband like this. Actually, I'm gonna do it from the pants side. It's just easier for me to see it and to not accidentally get it wrong. So I'm gonna pivot this pants to match, to match here. I'm gonna sew, I'm just gonna start about one to two inches before it and I'm gonna sew up until I get to this seam where it where I need to pivot to the V and then I'm going to sew down. I am now at the machine and I'm just two inches away from this V and I'm going to sew. Actually I started too close and I'm going to my first stitching is going to be basting because the first time I made these I had to rip stitches so many times that I realized that my life was just so much easier if I basted first, and then if I liked it, then did securing stitches over it. Okay, so I'm gonna start here and then just sew some basting stitches three eighths inch away from the edge until I get to this seam line. And then once I get to the middle of that V, right where the seam line intersects with that V, then I'm going to pick up my presser foot and shove the fabric out of the way because you're gonna have the excess fabric, and then I'm gonna line up my seam line for this part. And then once I have this fabric out of the way, I can put my presser fit back down, and then you're just gonna sew like about one or two inches away. And then all that's sewn right now is your V. And it looks like this. And is what we're gonna do is take a look and see if we like how we did it. And if you're happy with it, which I am surprisingly happy with mine, and I'm gonna go back over it and then use, use thread that I like, I'm gonna just go over it with my serger probably. And then I'll take out these, I'll take out my basting stitches since I didn't use thread that I like. If I would used thread that I liked, I would have just left them there. Um, so I think I'm happy with that and I'm going to leave it. But the key was, here, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it with my hands, was to sew on, which side did I sew on? I sewed on not the waistband side, I sewed on the pants side. Um, and the reason I did that is because this is where you're gonna have kind of some excess fabric. So I sewed on this side, I sewed down until I got to the seam line where I know that V, do you see the top V? where that is, so directly on. And if it helps you, you can even just draw a line right here and your seam line should be right. And when I say seam line, I don't mean the seam allowance that's showing, I'm talking about where the two seams meet. So right here, that should be completely even with this V point at the top. And whenever I got to that point, I put my needle down and picked up my presser foot and then shoved this excess fabric to the side, out of the way, and then sewed the rest of the seam. Okay, because so, that's what makes, a, I think, a V kind of hard, and sometimes you'll see bunching at a V, is when you have this excess fabric here, and it depends on where you move it. And your first line of sewing the seam, you're, you're moving it out of the way so you can sew this, and then when you get to the middle of your V, you're moving it back this way so you can sew the rest of your V. But if you sew it from the waistband side, there's not gonna be any of that excess fabric, and you're gonna think you sewed the most amazing V ever, and then when you turn it around, you're going to have this bunching on this side because you didn't know when and where to move this fabric out of the way. So I hope that explains that well for you. Um, now I'm going to move over to my serger and I'm going to sew the rest of my waistband on. So I'm just going to go down one side all the way around and then end here. If you're doing a regular waistband and you didn't have to do a V, then you just get to go straight across. Um, okay, so now to the serger to do that. Once I'm done with that, I'll be ready to top stitch the seam down um, and then finish some cover stitching that I wanna do down the legs and then hem. Okay, I'm at the cover stitch machine and I'm ready to cover stitch my last seam down. This is gonna be the hardest one to cover stitch. I think just because it's more bulky. Um, if your machine is gonna complain about the bulky factor, um, you can get a hammer out. Oh, you can get a hammer out and hammer 
um, your your seam down wherever there's bulky areas to kind of flatten it for your machine. So when we cover stitch this, I'm gonna start at the V point in the back. I'm gonna start right here. And I'm gonna start on one side and go up and then finish on the other side. Cause you can't really make a, a very good V with a reverse cover stitch, or at least I can't. Um, <laughs> since you can't, but I can't, I can't really make a very good V with a reverse cover stitch. So I find it easier to just start there. And I'm um, cover stitching the seam towards the body of the pants and away from the waistband. That's just what I, I've always done when I've done it, but you might find it easier to do it towards the waistband. Okay, at this point, you should have leggings that you can try on. You can check to see if you need to make any fit adjustments to, um, this is what my waistband looks like. And you see it's kind of ripply. You can seam that out or you can just, once it's on your body, it's not gonna look like that. Um, now I'm gonna go and top stitch my inseam. This is always, um, let me say, a more difficult part in the pattern just because of the way that um, trying to put this small amount through your cover stitch is really kind of hard. So since my legs are already together when I do this, I am going to um, start in the middle and go down one leg, and then I'm gonna start in the middle again and go down the other leg. It's easier if you do your inseam when your legs aren't together, but if you do them once your legs are together, that's how I do it. Okay, so because it's okay if you end up like having to overlap some right here. Nobody's going to look at your crotch that closely. And if they do, they're really not going to comment on how your cover stitching looks or even know about that. So I am starting on this leg, the left leg first. So I'm going to start on one side of my gusset. And if you don't have a gusset, just start in the middle where the seams meet. And you see how I'm just kind of bunching, or I should say, I'm bunching all this fabric out to just give it a flat space to work on. Because I don't want it to sew creases. I don't want to stretch anything. I really want the fabric to be as flat as possible when it enters the machine. I don't want it to be stretched out. And I don't want it to get bunched behind the presser foot because that can cause the presser foot to take extra stitches. Or I can cause the machine to take extra stitches because it won't move the fabric through as fast. So this is not really a fast part if you're reverse cover stitching it, just because you're constantly readjusting as it moves through. Okay, I'm ready to do the other leg. Um, I'm really happy for the most part with how this leg turned out. It did a pretty good job. There's only a few spots it took a little extra stitches. And then at the bottom, it caught some of my turger, my, my serger tail in this. So I think I'm gonna trim my serger tails on the next leg so that they don't accidentally get caught in my cover stitch machine. So now I'm ready to go down to the down the next leg. I'm gonna start again at the gusset. Now remember on your gusset, you wanna kinda you wanna push that seam to the back. So you're if you are top stitching your inner leg seam, you wanna make sure that your inseam is pushed towards your butt and not towards your front, just because of the gusset. My waistband is so tall, I'm like, where is the inside of my pants? I love the tall waist on this. It's just wonderful. Because of the tall waist, I really don't have to um, use that elastic in it. And I, it's just so comfortable. And so I'm starting just right where I left off on the other side. And at the beginning of a cover stitch seam, you're like, this is so easy. I'm going to finish this in just a minute. You don't realize that once you get near that ankle, it gets a little bit harder. So, um enjoy yourself. <laughs> enjoy yourself while you can. Um, anyways, what was I saying about the waistband? The waistband is just, it's so wonderful how 
I've had five kids and it just kind of pulls things in. I can do different exercise postures and I, I feel like my stomach is secure. Um, so a lot of times I exercise in my living room now. I don't have a gym membership at the moment. So when I'm working out in my living room, it's usually in front of my kids. There's people walking in and out and I like to feel like all of my skin is hanging inside of my body and I'm not um, just hanging flat out everywhere. Like my kids, I've talked to them about just letting their their friends just run into the house and see me in the middle of a yoga posture. It's kind of happiness. I should edit that part out. And the second leg is so far is going a lot breezier. I think sometimes the cover stitching is you can just get better with practice and um, the first few times I did it, I, I wasn't that bad, but I remember feeling like this was so much harder than everyone else made it out to be whenever I tried to do my first inseam. Making sure that my farthest out needle is catching on the other side of the seam. So here, I'll show you like right here. So that you can't see that crease, but that crease is actually like right inside there. So it's how I do that is by making sure that my outer needle is right on the edge of that seam. And then, so you can see how that's holding it down. Okay, we are ready to hem. So try your pants on and see how much of a hem you want. Um, on mine, I'm going to be doing, um, I measured and I'm at one inch. Um, it's amazing to me, different fabrics, how they can affect how much you need to hem. So sometimes I only need the half inch. Sometimes I need the full inch. It really depends on the vertical stretch your fabric have, has. Um, if fabric has a lot of vertical stretch, then you'll find that you might need to hem more than you do on other fabrics. So to hem, you're just going to turn your fabric under by the amount that you need. Uh, you can iron it down if you want, or you can just put clips to show where you need it. And then sew it in a round with a stretch stitch. And there you have it. I have one leg done, and then I'm gonna do the other, and then we are done. And since I hemmed in an inch, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off the extra because I didn't want to hem that far away from the edge. Okay, that is everything I have for this video. I'm so glad that you have joined me. Make sure that you show us your completed pair of leggings in the Green Style Creations Facebook group. If you're watching this video during the sew along, on October 10th, I will have a post up where you can comment with your completed pair of leggings and possibly win a prize from one of our sponsors. It'll just be a random pick. Our sponsors are the Fabric Fairy, Halo Fabrics, the Styled Magnolia, So Dynamic Fabric, and Green Style. So thanks so much for joining. I can't wait to see you next time.